The Sud de France is an organization that promotes the wine, the food, and the culture of southern France, specifically the Languedoc Roussillon. I am in love with the wines from Languedoc Roussillon, so they sent me out there for five days with a video camera. I visited 10 winemakers and got to see just how magical this place is. The following videos are my experience of the wines that we should be seeing more and more on the American market. Please enjoy. Then it was time to go in the winery and taste the wines that were from these amazing vineyards we had just seen. All the terroirs and all the soil compositions coming together in this one place. As we've gone through the De Languedoc Roussillon, I've seen so much passion and every winemaker has a different kind of passion. The attention to detail that Cyril has is absolutely incredible. And I soon found that all the information he gave me in the vineyard, I could absolutely understand while tasting these wines. Increase the temperature of the berries to avoid oxidation mm -hmm. from 25 26 degrees mm -hmm. to zero degrees Celsius liquid, not solid. The grapes are not frozen. He proceeded to go into great detail uh, about the process of bringing the grapes from the vineyard into the facility. Around 4 a.m. of the morning. Yes, you heard right, 4 a.m. in the morning. This is an attention to detail here. The reason they do it so early in the morning is because it's still cool. If it's too warm, the grapes could start fermenting. So they want to get it into the winery quickly so they can start the process of making beautiful wine. And one guy is emptying the cases on the sorting table and three guys take, to take off uh, the leaves, mm -hmm. uh, everything which is green, rotten or not ripe. Imagine this, all those vineyards that we saw, all those grapes are coming in and they're all being hand sorted by human beings. They employ a large labor force to go through and pick out the leaves, pick out the bad grapes, but again the attention to detail is really intense here because the wines that are eventually going to be made have to have that sort of elegance. Is to give you an idea until I press from zero mm -hmm. to 0 0.5 bar Okay. in pressure, it's a low pressure. Right. If we spend maybe, I spend around one hour. Wow. We just press slowly. It's my ages. Right. And then I'm starting to press a bit more. Right. Uh, it's my beaches. And then As he proceeded to go into great detail about the process of getting the grapes into the winery, it was, my mind was going a little bit crazy. Aging in a tank, but on leaves. You have all the grapes coming from the vineyards, red and white, they start with the white wine, they arduously go through all the grapes, find the bad grapes, they get them out of the way, they start pressing the grapes, and Cyril has this really great thing, he has A juice and he has B juice, and he presses very lightly, and crushes the grapes very lightly, and he gets his A juice, then he goes through a second run and gets his B juice. Now he has two styles that he can play with. And from the cellar we go into the winery where all the barrels are and we get a chance to see the sorting table while tasting some more wines. Take a look at these barrels. The structure of the Shiraz here in our place, it, it's... It here we are in the magic so room. All the things he's been explaining to me, I'm seeing here firsthand. This is where the sorting tables are, and this is where a thing called a giraffe is, where they take it from the December into the fermentation tanks. There are wooden fermentation tanks, there are steel fermentation tanks, and there are cement fermentation tanks. Into the, gir the giraffe, basically. Yeah. Basically, in this room, Cyril has everything at his disposal to make wines as he sees fit. 
he has all of these options at his disposal to make great wine. And here are more cement fermentation tanks. This is very popular down here and I love it. I love wine and I study it and I drink it and I blog about it and I write about it and I video it, but I don't know how to make it. But if I did have all that information in my head that cereal has, I can see why this would be so much fun. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure going on at the, during the time of harvest, but this guy seems like he's really got it down. And now we go into back into the cellar where he starts talking about oak and it's even more focused. He's even more focused about how when the wine gets into the barrels, what kind of barrels he wants. He looks for a certain kind of concentration of wood so that only certain amounts of oxygen get in to age the wine. Unbelievable. There's more fruity flavor, it's a bit more Which is great. Deli delicate. Yeah, and this is like, like berries, like yeah. dark bl bl black berries. Basically what I'm trying to do right here is I'm trying to explain, well, to a winemaker, which is kind of weird, but it's really for myself, how amazing and how expressive the wines are based on everything he's told me. We then try one of Negli's 100% Movedra. And Mavedra is a very interesting, interesting varietal, very herbaceous, but listen to what he says about it. Awesome. Mourvedre is, 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 you have to imagine Mourvedre, the structure of Mourvedre, midway between Grenache and Shiraz. That's why for aging time, we use the 600 liters barrels, de mimi, you know? Okay. And focusing even closer in, because of the way Mavedra is, he chooses certain barrels for it to age it a certain way. I mean, it, I don't know that it really gets any better than this as far as my experience in speaking with a passionate winemaker. This is incredible. Or like a, 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 a garni of spices. <laughs>